Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and the workshop indeed as well. Um, what you see here are uh, two trips to the uh, car boot sale or flea market. These are all the tools and stuff that I've purchased. So uh, we've got some interesting stuff here, especially this old fella here. Oops! Where's that gone? Right. There we go. So. Uh, Let's dig in and have a look what we got. I think we'll start with this old screwdriver here. Um, it, very, it looks very much like someone has put their own uh, handle on here, turned from aluminium, as you can see. It's a little bit more aluminium. They've made a quite a nice little handle out of it, and just uh, whopped this long blade into it. So uh, yeah, that's the first thing. I think I got this uh, from some lady selling a load of stuff. I think I paid uh, maybe a pound or two for this for this and something else. It may very well have been these two spanners that I got with that screwdriver, and also a small six-inch um, footprint wrench, which I sent to my friend in America. Uh, it's this thing here, as you can see, it's a little bit uh, rusty and it has lost its uh, pivot pin as well. But all the same, it still works and it's a nice, very nice bit of kit. And uh, I hope you enjoy it, mate. I got this from Mr. Silver Van Man. Uh, this is the size I've had up till now. Little small ones. This thing's enormous and uh, does actually take some uh, compressing too. It's quite strong. Oh, but yeah, so I, uh, I found uh, a similar model at work and I thought well, I'd like one of those. And uh, when I saw it on Mr. Silver Van Man's pitch, I thought, yep, I'm having one of those for £1.50 then. The other week when I went to the uh, boot sale, I picked this. German made um, pipe wrench up as a set of five tools which cost me five pounds I'll show you the others later on uh, and then this Sunday when I went I've got this big beastie here this cost me a pound as well this is an 18 inch pipe wrench but it's a bit of a bitzer so the uh, the handle itself is made by a company called Garrington and it says 18 inch just there as well so it's Garrington there and on the other side um, it's a long way now, hang on. The other side it says, hopefully you can see this, the Blackbird, okay, the Blackbird. Uh, the head, interestingly enough, is um, from a record wrench. Hopefully you can see that, guys. So somebody's cobbled together one wrench from two. Now whether he lost the uh, the head from the Garrington, I don't know, maybe the record handle got broken or something, but they're both 18 inch anyway, they're both marked as 18 inch. And um, yeah, so it's been cobbled together, so that's uh, quite interesting. I wonder how long somebody used it like this. There's a stall on the uh, Sunday market which I really do like. He specialises in old tools and he has crates and crates and crates of them. And I usually spend quite a bit of time looking through his stuff. And uh, yesterday I came up with this little giant 14 inch pipe wrench. Isn't this nice guys? Um, where's it made? Uh, Greenfield, Massachusetts, USA. Um, it's got a patent date of February the 14th, 1913 on the end here. Uh, it looks in fairly decent nick. I think some of the teeth may be a bit worn out just there on the uh, dynamic jaw, but uh, other than that, quite a nice little bit of kit. I quite like this actually. £10 I paid for that. One of my favourite purchases from the uh, car boot sale or flea market is always footprint wrenches. Look at this lot here. But they're not all actual footprint wrenches, guys. Not all of them. Uh, just these two here. So you may be thinking, why have I purchased more uh, nine inch footprint wrenches? I think I've got about five of them now. Uh, well, this is a very nice example. Very clean. Very nice indeed. It's, it, differs slightly from the other ones I got in that um, this here, the writing just here on the hook, is actually um, raised and not stamped in like this set here. Um, this set is probably, I don't know, maybe a bit older. Um, actually this set here, I've been looking for some of these for quite some time now. Um, they look the same as these ones, don't they? But they're actually not. Um, I was hoping to get these as a domino model, because I used to do these in dominoes originally. Um, this set here, you need to unscrew the pivot pin to move it along. But this set here, see again, it's a footprint. As I say, it was done by Domino originally. Uh, and what you do is, if you take a look here, you can probably see there are some slots just here, guys. And what you do is, you uh, there's this button on the side. You can see there's a spring there, hopefully. There's a spring there going on. 
And what you do is you um, open them out, push the spring in, and then you can quickly adjust them to any size you want. Brilliant, I like those. So as I say, I've got five nine inch footprint wrenches now. Uh, and the collection will be building up because I, I like these things actually. Okay, so looking very much like footprint uh, wrenches, especially these two here. They look like uh, footprint wrenches too, but they're not actually. These two are actually um, European copies. And uh, footprint, uh, or at least Thomas R. Ellen used to warn you about not purchasing uh, or looking out for um, copies made from uh, made in Europe at the time. So this is from about the early 1900s. The same, more or less the same time period as a lot of my other collection of uh, footprint wrenches. Uh, and these things are, well, to be honest with you, I'm going to be doing a, a specific video about these anyway, guys, so I won't tell you too much about them now. But these are uh, horrible, really. They're not made particularly very well at all, really. But um, we'll be looking at these in a future video. Now, these two um, are very interesting, and I like these two a lot, actually. Uh, these are from uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, probably from the Soviet era, maybe. I'm not sure how old these fellows are, actually, to be honest with you. Um, this one's Polish made, made in Poland, and this was made in uh, Czechoslovakia. So how old these are, I don't know, 50s, 60s, 70s, I don't really know. But uh, they're very nicely made, actually, guys. Um, I was going to include them as part of my um, cheap copies of uh, cheap copies footprint video but uh, they will be making an appearance but I'm, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do a separate video about these all together because they're, they're so nice to be honest with you I like these a lot actually quite nicely made uh, as you can see they're painted um, there's a slight difference in the uh, hook design as you can see on the both of them but uh, you know we'll we'll take a detailed look at these in a future video several old spanners here this is um, a Draper Monkey or Auto Wrench, it's 230 millimeters. This one, don't know how old it is. Drop forged, I quite like picking those up when I see them. Uh, I've got a little 15 and 11 mil spanner from Alfa Romeo toolkit, don't know how old that is. Quite interesting. Uh, a little snail brand, this is nice, a little snail brand uh, spanner. This has got a little snail on it just there, hopefully, you can see that, looks really nice. And the pick of this bunch is uh, this old footprint wrench here. This is a number 340. I've been cleaning it up a little bit because uh, I want to do a video on it. Um, it goes very nicely with this much larger model here. Um, this one's a bit later model, I think. I don't know what, uh, probably in the uh, 20s possibly. This one I believe to be from about uh, the 1900s because it's got a lot more stampings on it than this one here. So this could be a, quite an early one, this one. Very nice indeed it is. It works quite nicely too. Runs uh, quite smoothly. Just a little bit more uh, care and attention on that. Yesterday I picked up this uh, quite nice 8 inch Elliot Lucas Elect pair of combination pliers for my son. Because um, I have actually got, or did have, a complete set. These are This is Elliot Lucas as well. I had a complete set of these which I picked up uh, in the early 1980s. Um, I had the uh, combination plier and the side cutters. Well, it turns out my son decided he was going to pinch the pinch those, so I haven't got those with me at the moment. But hopefully, he's going to bring those back um, this Sunday when he comes over. I'm going to continue cleaning this up, get it nice and shiny for him. Uh, looks to be a very good nick. The uh, cutters work rather well, so hopefully um, he'll be pleased with those. This set of tools cost me 60p. They were 20 pence each from a lady. Oh, you've seen this one. It <laughs> comes with a little magnet, a really strong little magnet on there. But um, I also got this little pair of um, slip joint pliers that made in England. A bit grubby, they'll need a good cleaning up, but uh, other than that, they look alright. Now, I can't help thinking that these may have belonged to the same guy, to be honest with you, because we have a. Uh, it's either Grinder or Grinder Razor. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, Grinder or Grinder here. And we have this uh, rather interesting vintage J Asbury patented uh, spanner. Um, I can't really find out much about this particular spanner at all, really, um, other than the fact he was around in the uh, early to mid 1800s making adjustable spanners. Pictures of this one just just don't show up on the internet that I can see. 
but uh, this one's been badly abused actually guys someone's belted the hell out of this for some reason I don't know why anybody would want to do that but they certainly have and as you can see it doesn't work properly anymore but um, I think what I'm going to do is I'll probably make a specific video about this one if you'd be interested I'm certainly interested in it, it cost me two quid moving along to the grinder or grinder razor um, it says uh, forged and ground in Sheffield uh, you can see this the package in itself is quite old I'm thinking maybe 20s or 30s or maybe a tad earlier per chance but um, what we've got here is got the guy's name on it just here it says Wilson don't know if you can make that out at all um, and here is the razor itself looks nice doesn't it the only trouble is I think somebody's been trying to cut um, sorry look, can we get it out I think it looks like somebody's been trying to cut um, maybe lino with it because this is really thick and, s and really well stuck on this mess here so that doesn't look like shaving residue very much to me guys and we also have a little nick in the blade here and it really isn't that sharp either you can't shave with it at all so it's going to need uh, quite a little bit of work on that but um, I think you'll agree that is quite a nice little older cutthroat razor that one very nice we've got some uh, jimping going on just here on the little handle which you can just about make out there there's also a few little bits on the edge there too. Um, there's a nick on the blade anyway, just there. You see it's very dirty, I don't know what the hell that all is. It looks very much like it could be the old fashioned, I don't know what it is, it's something maybe Lino, I don't know. Because Lino had some black sticky stuff in it many years ago. But basically somebody's ruined this very nice little razor here, spoiled it really. But there we are. As I say, I'm, I'm wondering if, um, if they were both owned by... Uh, Wilson, whether that's Mr. Wilson or just Wilson, I don't know. Um, back in the uh, turn of the 1900s, maybe, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's quite an interesting little find. That two quid for this and a pound for the little razor. Okay, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, look at this late, latest collection of vintage tools of mine. I uh, really do enjoy uh, searching the car boot sales for these old things. Because, you know, otherwise they're just forgotten about and just lost to history and completely forgotten about. And I like to keep them alive, as it were, you know. Uh, I shall be cleaning some of these up. Might even sell a few of them, I don't know yet. But I, I most certainly won't be selling the uh, the footprint stuff. Won't be selling those, I like those. The footprint wrenches are my favourite. And I quite like these two here as well. I was going to, I say, I was going to enclose, in, in, use these as part of my video for uh, cheap copies of the uh, footprint wrenches. Well, I think they're going to have their own video to be honest with you because they're really quite interesting and I do like them a lot. So um, yeah, uh, I, I don't know if you, any of you out there can identify who manufactured these or when because I'd be very interested to find out. Um, I'm thinking 50s, 60s maybe, something like that there. They're very nice actually, they're very well made and I like them. <coughs> okay then guys, um, I hope you enjoyed. The, today's video. Let's take a look at these uh, tools. This is not so much vintage, but um, yeah, <clears throat> I quite like this uh, this collection again. I always love digging, digging through boxes. Um, the one thing I would suggest, though, guys, if you're diving through uh, boxes of old tools, always take a robust pair of gloves along with you, like I do, because I have came come across several occasions where I've been diving about through boxes, and there's been um, old Stanley knives, uh, chisels and they're just laying in there with open blades and sharp bits and there's you know probably broken bits of steel in there always take a pair of gloves with you guys because it's always worth it because you you know you don't want to get a cut because you don't know what to some of these tools are really filthy and you don't know what you might um, contract what you might catch who knows because uh, they can be really really filthy so uh, yeah gloves are an essential OK guys, well thanks for coming over, thanks for taking a look. Uh, as I say, if you do know anything about these Eastern European things here, Polish and Czech, Czech this one Czechoslovakia, if you do know anything about these, please let me know when they were made, who made them or whatever. This one's got um, RSR50 on it, uh, this one's just got made in Czechoslovakia, but yeah, they're very interesting, I love it. Alright guys, well, thanks for coming over. Um, Keep an eye on the channel because I'll be having a, you know, I'll be going to boot sale again in a couple of weeks and see what else I can dig up. Um, hopefully, some more footprint kit with any luck because I want to get uh, the next size up spanner from this one. 
So uh, yeah, if you enjoyed it, please let me know. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will catch you later. Okay, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, taking a look at this uh, latest collection of uh, vintage tools. Here's uh, what I found on the web. What? Who asked you? What's going on here then? I didn't ask you anything. Be quiet.